so hello everyone. Uh, right, so I received a lovely list of things to do from Alex, and I've tried to be very good and <laughs> for my list, and then I ended up with vast notebooks, so I will be looking down at notes and appearing as if I don't have a clue what I'm doing, as usual. <laughs> right, so, a um, little bit of introduction. I've always lived in South Devon. I grew up around Dartmouth, and then my mum and I moved over to Brixham so that I could go to South Devon College because at that point I was physically making myself ill, wanting to train in and work in the performing arts. That, that's how crazy I was about the whole idea. So, yeah, I came over, went to South Devon College, did my national diploma in performing arts, um, went on to Plymouth University. That was a snap decision. Mum went out shopping. <laughs> and I was wandering around at home, and then by the time she got home from shopping, I'd put in an application to Plymouth University. <laughs> and she was like, what? <laughs> um, and so I ended up doing film and TV production in Plymouth. And towards the end of that, I ended up also um, working with some theatre productions down there, and also doing a stint one day a week in the BBC Radio Devon newsroom. And then I completely worked myself to a frazzle, fell ill, moved back to Torbay, um, sorted myself out with a real kick up the backside, and then I went to Exeter University um, to start a, well, I completed a part-time master's degree in teaching theatre. And at the same time as doing that, I got the grand idea of starting the South Devon Players. <laughs> so, at one, so at one point I was doing my master's degree in teaching theatre. I was working part-time at Churston Grammar School and running around with this. So, yeah, I've always, always been a bit of a workaholic, as the people that know me in the audience will say, I, yeah. Anyway, so, the South Devon Players. We started out, um, there were originally four of us. Um, we came together wanting to make um, more opportunities for ourselves in the Bay. We weren't happy with what we could find in the area. And we'd sit and wear the spoons of an evening down vigilance, bewailing our fate. And then one evening, I was, pretty, I was that drunk, I was pretty much falling off the bar stool. <laughs> I said, well, instead of complaining all the time, let's start our own. And then once I'd got over the hangover, it still seemed like a good idea. <laughs> so actually, we, we got underway. Um, we raised originally £80 with a car boot sale. We found the back room of the then British Legion Club, and we, start, we found some history books, and we put together our local history play, which opened in uh, 2006, about a very naughty vicar up in uh, Totnes called John Prince, and he got, he got himself into a situation with a serving girl at what is now the Seven Stars. A lot of the locals were looking in the window and enjoying the scene. Anyway, it ended up in a massive church investigation, and although it was a completely true story and the, the original records are horrifically ribald, it made a wonderful play. So that, that gave us the idea of focusing on history and the classics. That way we weren't stepping on anyone's toes, whether anyone was amateur, professional, anything like that in the Bay, they didn't have that same focus. So we thought, we're doing our own thing, we're not stepping on toes, and we're building. So, um, time went on, we've explored all sorts of things. We started very much focused on Devon history. We did, um, there was a highwayman called Old Mob, whose uh, main claim to fame was ro uh, robbing Hanging Judge Jeffreys. That made quite a good play. And that was around the same time that uh, William of Orange landed in Brixham. So when we did the research on that, we combined it all into one play. We put that on. We've done, um, I'm thinking local, local stuff, we've also done a show about when the, the surviving crew members of the Titanic were brought back to Plymouth. That's a little bit of Titanic history that not a lot of people knew, but again, made a wonderful production to put on. And then we've expanded, um, we've done a non-musical production of Les Miserables twice, as of this year. We did it in 2013 uh, for the first time. That was our big push because we ended up uh, sponsored by a London producer to do a second run. So we did that 
and that was that catapulted us out of oh we can just about afford this church hall and sort of uh, to hiring theatres and getting more getting more bigger audiences bigger opportunities and then well going forward to this year <laughs> this year has been absolutely massive for us we, we hit a low point then we hit a massively high point we started um, well, well, this time last year we were already well in rehearsals for an uncut production of Shakespeare's Macbeth. Now you'd think doing a cursed show is going to be an absolute disaster. Not on your life. We did it in Brixham and Torquay initially, um, and we had actors coming in from Ireland and everywhere to do it. It's, it went on to get massive um, feedback, we'll screen some in a minute, um, comparing us to the productions of the Globe. Um, we then won a theatre award in New York for it. So while we'd already scheduled our next production of Les Mis, we then held Macbeth with offers coming in for more autumn performances while we did Les Miserables, finished Les Miserables, went straight back into Macbeth again. <laughs> So we finished that finally in October um, on an absolute high and we're now back to our old traditions of local history. Um, we're doing a play about the Great Gale of Brixham mm. uh, which happened in 1866. In a nutshell it wiped out a lot of the fishing fleet and led to the town getting its first RNLI lifeboat. So that's our next play which is up in just a couple of weeks, yeah, two weeks now, scary. And then, after that, we're back into Shakespeare again with Midsummer Night's Dream. And my other half is doing that as his directorial debut. So he's going to be well supported by the group and go ahead with that. So we've, we've got quite a history that's built up. And where we started with four of us based in Brixham, now we've got actors from all across Devon coming in. We're touring our shows up as far as Bristol. Inquiries are now coming in from Bath. We've been invited to the Republic of Ireland, although that's on hold because of Brexit and not knowing what to do with work permits and travel from one minute to the next. But those invites are open, which means that once the political situation is sorted, we can go back and, yes. and revisit those and actually start take that international step. So, that, so that's just on hold. <coughs> about past, sorry. Okay. Um, and it was all done because where we weren't finding the opportunities we wanted, we were finding was very much, this is an amateur group, this is an amateur group, this is an amateur group. <laughs> you want to be professional! <laughs> we said, well, no, we're going to go and make our first steps. We've, we do it on an absolute shoestring. The cast and crew are paid from the ticket sales, which is below the equity minimums on that, and um, so I do sometimes get a bit of stick for that. But when we show the books, we're fundraising with market stalls and sponsored, literally once, dancing on tables, any, anything to fundraise for the production costs, which then means that the ticket sales go to the actors, that's providing some work. We're now working with external corporate companies, sending our actors out to do training, um, they're, they're working with youngsters in school in Torquay at the moment on an anti-bullying production, leading the youngsters in producing a play. And we've worked with Disney and the BBC and all sorts of bigger companies like that, which is putting local people into employment in the arts, while we're still toddling along with what we can. Um, yes, yeah, so, so that's really the background of what we're doing. Um, we are about to push a big um, fundraising, uh, what would the word be? Fundraising initiative, that's the posh word for it. Um, I've got people who are on the top equity executive, again in Ireland, through, through that set of contacts, but then they're linked to the UK. They're advising me very well on all the legalities, making sure we're up to scratch on all policies and correct professional practice. And they're also helping me, almost, there are online conversations almost daily now about creating a Friends of the South Devon Players. 
that's already launched and we've got our first um, five or six members now signing up to that. We're looking now into corporate sponsorship as well. So we're providing all sorts of opportunities to businesses local and further afield with advertising, logo placement, um, appearance in um, the theatre programmes, headers on show videos. We've got, the show video sounds not a lot, but when you think we've got over 22,000 social media followers around the world, and our performances now are screened to other schools and companies, especially in the US, Asia, um, the Middle East, Saudi Arabia was the latest place to get, there was a school there, the latest to get in touch over Macbeth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a, there's a lot that we can push that way to hopefully get companies on board and that and supporting and working with, with them. The problem, the problem is because there's only a handful of us involved in the admin, we tend to sort of be hidden away rather than out networking. I usually can't make these meetings, I've had to do a big juggle to get tonight. So <coughs> please come and talk to me while I'm around because just because I'm not always in view doesn't mean to say that I'm not around and not active and interested, if that makes sense. Um, so just I'd love, I'd love to show you a few pictures of what we've been doing. So these are behind the scenes working, um, the top two were rehearsals again this time last year for Macbeth up in Higher Brixham and then, whoop, not that, then this lovely young lady on the far side, um, Charlotte, she's 12. She's come in initially as an actor on the Great Game of Brixham, she's my assistant director. She's doing absolutely amazingly and th this is through anxiety and all sorts of other things. But she's absolutely fantastic up there, and one day she's going to be a director that outstrips all of us, I think. <laughs> so we're, we're open to all people of all ages and all backgrounds. And that's, sorry, push on to the next one. That was again working um, behind the scenes in Macbeth. Macbeth and Macduff practicing for their big fight on the far end. We, we basically locked ourselves in the community centre that day and just got that fully choreographed. And then again, on this side, showing that ladies can be theatre techs too. O overall, on our tours, we found a few places get taken aback by that. Um, but there, um, on this side, is Dorothy, who's our equity contact, and our lovely tech, um, Gemma. And um, Dorothy's helping Gemma with the technology and the good practice and things, and sort of stuff beyond what I'll know on the tech side. <laughs> Sorry, a men to leap on. And then that lovely blurry foam photo. Um, three of the awards, three mm. of the four awards we've won. Um, on this side, we had the 2010 um, Tour Bay Together Creativity in the Community Award. That was our first one. And then the middle one, the lovely glass, was the 2017 All England Award in Newcastle, the Epic Award that we won. And then on the far side is the one we won this year in New York, mm -hmm. in the Long Island Theatre Film Festival. Mm -hmm. So that's it. And then some stage photos from the Scottish play. We, we got some really good photographers in and they kind of went crazy for it. So um, yeah, and more, mm -hmm. more Scottish play ones. And then on to the last one, sorry, of show photos is um, some more production photos from Les Mis. The, two, the top two ones, we took full advantage of the back streets of Brixham. We, we took mostly the revolutionaries up and did all sorts of photos up around the back of, I think where, um, not, not the Smugglers Halt Hotel, but further along those back lanes. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we, used, we used our backdrop and took, took it out into the community. Okay. So, um, having talked the hind leg off a donkey, um, if you've got any questions, any feedback, any things you'd like to know, anything that you'd like to talk about, how we could collaborate, I'd love to hear. Can yes. I ask um, where you'll be performing The Great Gales? I'd really love like to come and see Okay, um, that's at Brixton Theatre on December the 13th in the evening, and then a matinee in the evening on uh, the 14th. 
Right. Then we're going on in January to Ivy Bridge with it. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just congratulations, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. That's much appreciated. Thank you. I agree because I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. What I love about this is we've got to pop it backside. Yeah. Made it happen. Not that you want it backside. <laughs> no, I do know what you mean. Yeah. Thinking, oh, we'd love to be doing this. You've actually made made that happen. Yeah. yeah. And also, it's a marvellous thing for those businesses that are tourism yeah. businesses. It's lovely that you are in our local theatres and they can go and see it. But also, we as a community need to make sure that we support what you're doing as well. Yeah. And what a thing to have you built awards. Yeah. I mean, That's that is it's remarkable. Brilliant. We can see you all my best. We're great. Thank you. <laughs> hey, some brilliant first hand feedback. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much.